Good morning, everybody. This is my first video in the last uh, two years or three years for the English speaking um, I'm a fellow Americans. Why am I doing this? Because I usually do it in Spanish. I record my videos in Spanish. There's a large um, Hispanic community, Cuban American community, people who speak Spanish anyway, who can get my message. But I think that as we near the election date, the E-date, as I call it, it's important that also English-speaking Americans get to know what our concerns, what our angst are nearing the election. So that's why, of course, it's going to be a, re a reduced version because as we know, idiosyncratically, English-speaking people are much more succinct, are much more synthetic, and um, they're not into... Uh, lengthy narratives and rhetoric. So my point today is what happens if Biden wins? I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for. I'm not gonna tell you that the guy I'm gonna vote for or the gal I'm gonna vote for is the best. What I'm gonna tell you is what I foresee will happen and then you think about it, draw your own conclusions if Biden wins. If Biden wins the Supreme Court, SCOTUS, it's gonna be packed. What do we mean by a packed Supreme Court? As we know for years, for decades, the Supreme Court has, has had nine members. It's, it has not always been this case. Supreme Court has changed the number of judges um, in time. But the plan now is not to put one more or two more or take out two judges, leave it at seven, put it up uh, put it up at 11. The plan is to pack the court. 15 people, 20 people. What well, it all, it always have to be an uneven number, an odd number. So like 15, 21, something like that. What happens if you pack the courts? The specific weight of each judge will be dissolved. They would become less important and the Supreme Court will cease to be the utmost body for the delucidation and the clarification of all things legal and constitutional in the US. That is a plan they have. So the least important the judges are, the more chances and the more chances that we don't get to any uh, coherent, comprehensive law, that there's chaos, which is what they're looking for, and um, it's gonna be impossible to get consensus. All of this comes from the fact that, for whatever the reason, Trump has been lucky enough to nominate two judges and he is in the process of nominating the third. That would make it a six to three in favor of conservative. And one may argue that, well, uh, why shouldn't I fight to make it liberal? And you may have a point there, but my, what I'm trying to say is that we've been through conservatives Supreme Courts. Actually, Obamacare was passed because of one decisive vote. Chief Justice Roberts, a conservative. And there are several laws that have been interpreted by the Supreme Court as the liberals wanted, with a conservative majority. I don't have any evidence, and I don't have any hopes that once seated there, liberals are going to rule thinking on the law. I'm afraid they are going to legislate from the bench, the red targets, as they call it in Italy, and this is gonna be a whole mess. So packing the court is not a good idea. And that is one of the first things that will happen. But to pack the court, they have to get rid of filibuster. What is filibuster? For those who are not familiar with the American reality, filibuster, um, comes from the fact that in any the discussion or debate on a law, uh, the senators, especially senators, are as long as they don't take a pause, they're able to talk endlessly and delay the approval of a certain law. Also, that a law has to be approved by 60 senators, which means that not only having the majority, unless you have a bulletproof majority, um, allows you to um, pass a law, you will have to reach across the aisle. Mind you, the Democrats, several years ago, 
impose something called the nuclear option. Whereas by a simple majority of senators in a vote, they were able to pass laws. I always said, what's good for the geese is good for the gander. This is a slippery slope. You're gonna regret it. Now they are regretting it. So what is the what is their reaction? Instead of saying, no, we made a mistake, let's go back to the 60 votes rule. No, let's back the court. So if they get rid of filibuster, they apply a universal nuclear option, which means that all laws will be passed by the Senate by a simple majority. One Senate would make a difference or would make the law. Where are checks and balances? Where is the so-called founding fathers conceived system that they all babble so much about? The one that is under attack by the right. But it looks to me that it, it is under attack by the left in this case. So pack the courts, get rid of filibuster, get rid of the electoral college, which means that candidates will, bring, will win the presidents by simple majority, by a head count. And one would say, well, ain't that democratic? Isn't it, isn't it the way that in other countries a president and a prime minister gets elected? Yes, it is. But remember, America has democratic features, but it's a republic. That was the way it was conceived, so that the elitist, exclusive, usually stone out of touch, coastal kingdoms, to call it somehow, do not crush and suppress middle America, the farmers that produce what we eat, and the working people. Electoral college are a, a form or, or a way of check and balance, which is the essence of our system. They wanna get rid of that. So you win by a simple majority. If you're able to mobilize a mob in New York and LA, you're out. So Republicans, Republicans can kiss the presidency goodbye. They're gonna get rid of the electoral college. That's gonna happen if we elect Biden. So, what else will, will happen? They will tax us to death. In order to pay for those utopias they have like, um, you know, children of flowers, peace and love and kumbaya, they need money. And the only way they're gonna get the money is that they're gonna bankrupt the corporations and they're gonna tax us to death. We're gonna pay more taxes. Biden said it, it's not me, he said, I'm gonna tax, I'm gonna increase taxes. So more taxes so that they can finance their utopias. It's not gonna be money used for Jamal and Akeem in the hood. It's not gonna be money used for Albertico and Esperanza in the Hispanic neighborhoods. It's not gonna be for the minorities. It's not gonna be for the working people. That money is going to be robbed from us, we the people. They're gonna tax the millionaires too, eventually, if they keep the word and that money is going to be used to finance their utopia. So what is the utopia? So that people get a salary even if they don't want to work, so that we get rid of natural gas and uh, fossil fuels, which could be a good idea, but it would have to be done gradually, slowly, at a coherent pace, rather than cut off, chopped off all of a sudden. So to finance those crazy policies that are gonna put us much more in debt than what we are now, which is the fault of both parties, by the way, I'm not saying the Republicans have nothing to do with the debt. They do have to do with the current debt, and it's something that we can argue about for, for ages. So to finance those utopic procedures and dreams and projects, they're gonna use the money they're gonna tax from us. So the government is going to rob money from us and use it to finance whatever they think is best. And that government, we're not going to be represented. It's just the Democrat. Because remember, no filibusters. We're not in the presidency. SCOTUS has changed. It's packed. So all the laws that pass are their laws. And they're, they're not going to be thinking about us and the way we feel on the other side of the political spectrum. So... Can you imagine the whole of the U.S. becoming a California, becoming a New York, where people are just fleeing to neighboring states? People from California are fleeing to Texas. 
and other states, people from New York are coming. Have you noticed how many um, license plates and tags you see in New York, the yellow ones you see here in Miami lately? Because they're running away from taxes, from chaos, from people defecating and urinating in plain sight in the street, in front of businesses, the stench of urine and feces killing everybody. I mean, they talk about COVID, they talk about contamination, contagious, but what could be worse than human feces and human urine in the middle of, in the, middle of the street, in, in front of businesses, in front of barbershops, in front of grocery stores? That is what America will become if Biden wins. And how will we subsidize all those utopic uh, dreams and maneuvers? by the more taxes we'll be paying. And probably the rich will be affected too. And you know what the rich are gonna do? They're gonna go somewhere else. They're gonna go back to do the things in China. So Biden will have to explain to me and to us in layman's terms, how is he planning to bring back jobs from China if he's gonna tax the daylight out of the entrepreneurs? I don't, I don't see any logical correlation there. It's not gonna happen, it can't happen. You can't play ball under the rain. You can't promise that you're gonna bring the rain and you're gonna play ball at the same time. You have to do one or the other. So that is something else that will happen if Biden wins. I don't know if you heard about the latest uh, proposal in California where well, the council proposed a 10 year mandatory tax term for Californians. You know, names are beautiful. Um, legal terms are gorgeous. But why don't we go beyond the very word of it? You know what a 10-year mandatory tax means for Californians? That even if they move to Texas, for the next 10 years, they will have to pay to California the taxes that they paid on the last year. So if your, if your tax burden was $4,000 this year, and you move to Texas and you work there and, and, and all your life is there, you still have to pay your $4,000 in California for the next 10 years. That, that's the way they're gonna to use to subsidize the utopia. I mean, ain't it communism? I mean, doesn't it look like Cuba and the Soviet Union that if you're from Siberia, you couldn't go to Moscow and if you go to Moscow, uh, you, have, you, have, you have to pay somehow for it? I mean, ain't this exploitation? What happened to the left? 10 year mandatory tax. Google it up. Don't take my word for it. That's what it, what they want to impose in California and that will be imposed on us if Biden wins, which would end up bringing less freedom of choice and less diversity among the states of a union. Because if you still have to pay your tax here, why would you leave? So there would the, this sacrosanct competition among the states to get the best professional, to get the best industries would end, would be dead. And we will be standardized, united, screwed up states of America if Biden wins. So what is Biden's final proposal? And I'm not saying that it's his proposal. Let me, let me put this clear. I don't think Biden is a communist. I never said that and I will never say it. He's not a communist, but you don't have to be a communist to kick me into communism. You don't have to, to be the devil to take me to hell. You don't have to be stupid to commit stupidity. You don't have to be a criminal to commit a crime. Biden is not a communist. I never said that and I will never say it. But the entourage that surrounds Biden is very much to the left. He's so far to the left that he has left America. And Biden may well be a one-term president or even a, a four-month president or a two-month president or a two-year president. 
because you never know what happens when you're at their age. Mind you, Biden, if he wins, will start at the very age that Ronald Reagan left the White House. And remember back in the day when they said that Reagan was old, that Reagan was senile, that he was too old for the, that he was unfit for the job? Well, now we want somebody older as a solution to all our problems. So Biden, somebody who has been in the system for almost 50 years, in the system for almost 50 years, is the left promise to solve and tackle all the systemic problems and issues that we have. Something doesn't, something really doesn't make sense to me here. So you've been in the establishment forever. The establishment is rotten according to your rhetoric and you are the solution. Something doesn't add up here. I don't know. I may be stupid, but there's something wrong. If Biden wins, that will happen. If Biden wins, we won't all be equally rich. His loyalty is to the fourth international, to the mob, to the far left that allowed him to be there, that is giving him support, that is insulating him, and eventually, we won't be equally rich. We will be equally poor. We will be equally bankrupt. We will be equally ignorant. If Biden wins, it means that we lose. And Biden can never win if we, the people, do not elect him. You draw your own conclusions. Don't judge from what I said. Don't antagonize me. Don't call me a lunatic. Google up stuff. Google up things. See what the candidates have said in the past. And you draw your own conclusions. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, in the next few days, I'll be just shooting another video for my English speaking Americans, my fellow Americans, so that we exchange the concerns that we have. One final point before I leave. This autumn of 2020 reminds me of the autumn of 1958. Back in Cuba, we all said anything to get rid of the black guy. Now I hear the rhetoric saying anything to get rid of the blonde guy. Mind you, the price I paid back then is indescribable. I hope we don't have to pay the same price here in America because we make a mistake. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day.